Hey, all you savages out there. Listen, uh, welcome to the newly constructed uh, Vanguard video studio uh, up in our crawl space attic area. Uh, as you can see, we don't have a full background or anything, but um, this is one of the first videos that we've shot specifically for this that wasn't just out in class. Um, so I'm excited to share it with you. I'm also excited to uh, introduce again Christian Banghart. Uh, I've been telling you a lot about this guy. He's done a couple little guest appearances on stuff all the way from being a blue belt to now, many, many years ago to now, he's a black belt. Um, his, uh, obviously I've been teaching him for years. He knows everything I know and he's starting to do some really good stuff, figuring stuff out on his own and being influenced from a lot of different stuff. And I'm really excited that Christian's decided to share, uh, share some of his knowledge with us here on BJJ curriculum. So Chris, what are we starting out with today? Uh, well, first of all, I'm super excited to be here today. Thank you for having me on and uh, getting to be a part of BJJ curriculum and add some content to the website. I'm super pumped about that. Uh, what we're going to be working on today, we've been a uh, super hot topic right now, especially in the BJJ community, is leg locks. And unfortunately, there's uh, a lot of negativity sometimes towards leg locks and leg positions in the community. And Today we're going to try to work to break some of that down and show you guys some ways that you guys can train safely at your own gym. I'm uh, going to share with you today a positional approach to leg locks. We're going to identify six different positions for you for, for legs and just like we have a positional approach for all of the you know mount, side, guard, half guard, all that kind of stuff, that wheel, Chris has developed a similar approach to the, to the leg locks. So he's going to show you six positions, and then he's going to show you some drills within those positions that only focus on positional control and transition. We're not going to teach you any leg locks today, but any leg locks that you know or you learn will be made stronger and a hundred times more effective by the positional control approach that Chris is going to share with you today. And all of the drills that we do are going to help you develop a safe, controlled method for training applying and competing with leg locks. Sound good? Perfect. <laughs> so one of the things that we talked about going back a ways ago was that one of the reasons that everybody in the community is so uh, up in arms about leg locks is it's tough to train them safely when people that don't really know what they're doing, they're just going for toe holds and heel hooks and people get, people get injured because they don't understand how to train them safely. So Christian approached me a couple years ago about um, approaching the leg locks not from a submission standpoint but from a posture or a positional approach and so Christian's put together a really good positional or postural hierarchy for all the leg locks which allows us to approach the leg locks not as attacks but as control positions and as tools to be able to transition and attack from. No absolutely and uh, that's what we're going to go through so as we do these videos today um, there's two ways you can go through it. You can start with this first one or you can jump right into the drills. With this first video, what we're going to do is just identify all the different leg positions or leg postures that you guys are going to be using. Then the next videos, we're going to be showing you guys how to do the drills to make those positions a little bit stronger and how to maintain them so that you're not hurting your partner going after the submission. So first thing, if you just started jiu-jitsu, hopefully um, someone's gone over with you the six basic positions, or if you're including north-south in the scarf, your eight basic positions. With the leg positions, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna show you that hierarchy going all the way up to the top. So the first position is gonna be the 50-50. This is at the bottom of the barrel for me. This is not uh, something I normally enter into as a go-to. This is a position that we might pummel into after we're going back and forth. But I'm never gonna go seeking out this position, me personally, slightly because I have short stubby legs, so I don't have a lot of good uh, defense of protecting this leg here. One of the reasons that Chris is talking about not getting, uh, not necessarily starting from the 50-50, um, is it doesn't allow us an advantageous position. It gives us everything that the other person uh, gets. So if he's a little bit faster or if she's a little more flexible or whatever, we, we don't want to enter into this position where we've got the same opportunities as our opponent. So we can use it as a sweep, as a transition, or maybe our opponent gets us there. So we need to know it and know how to work from it. But if you'll notice all those other all the other five positions of the six give us an advantage on even somebody that is more flexible, stronger, faster than, than we are. 
Fair enough. Yes, sir. All right. So the first position we're going to go over is the single X. This um, tends to be the more commonly entered position. It's more accessible to people when we're going through. So we're going to go over uh, proper position, proper control. We're going through. Can I uh, grab you right here, sir? So if uh, if I can have you sit down for me, when we're entering into the single X, it's very common that people, they leave a little bit too much space. And I, I need to be very mindful about that. Anytime my partner's knee is below my thigh, like so, he, he's probably gonna get out. I've pretty much lost this position and I should look to start to transition to something else or just come up. So I've gotta keep this knee higher above my thigh, creating a wedge behind his knee. So I'm gonna scoot closer to him. One of the things that prevents people from doing that, getting behind this knee, is they'll hook the near, the near leg rather than the far leg. And if you guys notice, naturally, it's already giving him some space to start to pull this leg away. It's also giving me no control of this far hip, so it's easier for him to start to brace and push this leg away. So the way we fix that is just by hooking the far leg. I take my foot here, and I wrap my hook around his thigh. This allows me to scoot a lot closer, and it makes it more difficult for him to use this leg against me when he's trying to pummel out. Now, I'm gonna create a frame around his leg. I take my outside leg and I chop it down on his thigh and I'm gonna cover my heel with my knee. Rather than being here, very easy to see my heel, very easy to pry off and to push away. I wanna cover that up, taking that window of opportunity away from him. Cool. Um, another thing to keep in mind is if you're doing this position properly, you'll notice that when he moves, you should be moving as well. If he's a lot stronger than you and he's trying to get away, if I'm anchoring down on this, my partner tries to move away, it moves me with him. But if we do like the first one, where I'm hooking here and I'm hooking like this, and now he moves away, it's really hard for me to keep this leg. I'm losing all this space here. So always hooking that far leg here like so, scooting down, and I'm hooking in. Anytime I feel like I'm starting to lose this position, I'm gonna transition right away. Next position, we're gonna go over. First, we just went over the single X, and now we're gonna go over the diagonal. The, the diagonal, instead of having my foot on the inside, I have both my feet on the outside. This is uh, super controlling for me, and a lot of people who don't uh, play with leg locks, they, they normally get a little bit stuck here because they'll try to attack your feet, but you really can't because I have both of my feet here to aid one another and protect themselves. Whereas my partner here, he doesn't have the use of this far foot to protect his. So this is very controlling for me. Um, this, this position can be a little bit harder if you're going against someone with a really long leg. And I find this to be a more advantageous position than the single X if it's not IBJJF rules because the heel hook is very accessible to me. If you're playing by IBJJF rules, then you're probably gonna prefer the single X a little bit more because you don't have that heel hook that you can utilize. When I'm in this position, what I do with my feet is very important. One of my favorite things to do is to try to stack my feet on top of each other, keeping him away from me. So if he's trying to reach towards me, very difficult to do. And if I've got a straight ankle lock in my hands, I have lots of leverage to press off on him here like so. When I cross my feet, if I don't have my feet on him, he's pushing them to the side, I need to make sure that I'm protecting them. I have both feet to do so, but I've gotta be careful about which way I cross my feet. If I cross my feet like this, I'm okay. He can't heel hook me here. But if I cross my feet with the top leg over, some people can actually go after this top leg. He doesn't have a lot of hip control, but it's something I'm not, I don't wanna leave out there if I can avoid it. So I cross my feet the other way and I keep them in. Same thing like the single X, I'm trying to bend this knee. I'm scooting closer, I'm turning this in, and I'm starting to get this 90 degree bend in his knee. This makes the heel hook a lot stronger, or the straight ankle lock, whichever one you're going KFC. with. The KFC is knee, foot, and calf. Those are all uh, three things that I'm trying to control and possibly attack. For the KFC, I'm sitting on my, my partner's stomach here like so, I'm pinching my knees in, and I'm keeping everything close. Notice his knee is above my thigh, so I'm still keeping that thigh line in mind. If my partner, if they, uh, a lot of times they're gonna defend by crossing their leg here like so, that's not a problem. There's still lots of options. One thing I would recommend is using this knee to elevate. If he's crossing his feet below, uh, not great control. Grab this ankle, straighten this knee out, elevate it. Now I've got torque on his lock once again. If I fall to the side here, 
I, I gotta make sure I'm being tight because again, now he's starting to get some space. He's, I've lost some pressure on him and I've gotta be careful that he's not getting this knee below that thigh line. So always underhook, elevate the knee and keep scooting your hips closer to him when you're in this position. These, these last two positions, these are our, our reaping positions that we're gonna go over. The first one we'll do, this is our reaper. So anytime your foot, if the foot is trapped between your hip and your armpit, and you're bringing this outside leg across, this is reaping. This is, this, uh, that motion can be very dangerous because it puts torque on the knee, um, especially if you haven't trained before and this person's not reacting um, the right way. If he's trying to turn into me and I'm bringing this leg across, it can be dangerous. But once you know that, it, you can actually train pretty safe. When I'm going into the reaper, my goal is to take this outside leg and bring it behind underneath his knee. It's very important that I control the far leg anytime I'm using the honey hole or the reaper because the number one escape from here for a lot of people is gonna to be to turn away and sprint out of this position. So I've gotta hook that knee like so. Leg comes across, I hook underneath the knee. Now, much harder to do. I can make this position even stronger because if he's able to block my knee and high leg this back, by using this leg as well, if I can bring you back, sir, by bringing it under and trapping with my heel. Now this is super tight, much harder to get out. My other position is the honey hole or the forward one, the knee knot, whatever you want to call it. This leg's coming across here like so. I'm hooking this far thigh. And what I want to try to create is almost a uh, 90 degree bend in his knee. So right now his knee is straight. So I'm going to turn a little bit, twerking his knee to the side and elevating this leg making this heel present for me. You can put the shin behind the Achilles. This is something I've been playing with a little bit more, but prior to doing that, I would always figure for the legs, keeping the knee above and keeping this leg from moving away. Same thing like the Reaper. I wanna monitor this leg from uh, him using it to high leg and sprint out of this position here. Well, because all these positions are really related. If, if you look at his leg, Really, the only thing that changes is where my feet are at, but my feet are almost always on the outside. So if, if my feet are here, I'm basically in the diagonal. If I rotate a little bit, now I'm in the KFC. But if I continue to rotate, my feet are back on the inside, and I'm in the honey hole. So I want you to kind of keep that in mind, because th those positions are so closely related, you've got to be ready to switch from one to the other, and, and not insist on, a, on an attack that's not there, once my partner is uh, defended properly. So, my first transition from the single X to the diagonal is gonna be when my partner clears this heel. He's pushing this heel off and hopefully I made this position really tight so he has to kind of struggle here for a second. But as he pushes this foot down, I'm gonna pull this leg out like so and I'm gonna cross my feet covering. Just gotta make sure I cross in the right way. Here like so. Same thing as before, I'm scooting my hips closer to him and I'm pulling this leg underneath like so, getting lots of tension here. Here, pushes the heel off, I pull this leg through and I cover like so. Hips go behind the knee, I pull the heel in, everything's in tight. This is huge guys. Like if uh, what I've seen, I I've done and I've felt and I've seen people do is they'll hit this transition but then they leave the leg straight. They leave the leg straight and there's this space back here where I can defend. What Chris is doing is getting his hips close, taking away that space and bending the knee, right? Come back. If I can get my knee below his legs, I'm not worried about it. And people will leave the leg straight here by turning your body into an S like we talked about in our other leg lock videos and getting the leg bent at a 90 degree, now I can't get out. Anywhere I go, I'm dragging him with me and there's less space for me to defend. So it's much, much stronger. Safely. When I'm dealing with the single X, rather than just spazzing out on the submission, I wanna first understand what my partner's natural reactions are gonna be. So when I'm in here tight, and I'm in close like this, one of the things we talked about is anytime you have too much space with this knee, my partner, you know, whether he's um, just scooting away from me, he's pushing on my leg, if I feel this here like so, I need to move right away. I can transition to the diagonal 
or what I'm gonna prefer you guys to do right now is we're gonna to transition to our combat knee. So if, he, if he's using his hands and he's using his foot here just to scoot away from me, he's using this space here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this leg back using a technical stance like so, and now I'm gonna close this space. I use my trail leg to start pressuring in, and right away I'm looking for the pass. If he's not scooting away with just his hands, but he's using his foot to block me, and he's, he's now um, scooting back at the same time, same thing, same thing, whether he's pushing away, I'm pulling this leg back, and I'm coming right to my combat knee, like so. So, first thing we're gonna deal with is natural reactions that you're gonna have from your partner. The first one is if I'm not keeping this knee above above the thigh line, I'm here whether he's scooting away from me or, or you just entered in not deep enough into the position. I'm gonna retract this leg and I'm gonna pull it behind me using my technical stance. Elbow in tight, leg comes back. As soon as my leg comes back, this is my trail leg. I need to start putting pressure right away to close this space in here like so. And I can even use this as an opportunity to jump right back into the position and get that space close again. That's the first one, the first one I want you guys to drill. The second one, I have this heel over and maybe I'm not closing this in tight enough and he has the space, he pushes my foot off and he hops over my leg to get some space. As soon as he does that, I'm gonna pull back real quick. My feet are kind of in this position. I'm just gonna switch them. I'm gonna switch them here and I'm gonna sit up over the knee, like so. Switch my feet, sit up over the knee, immediately using this trail leg to start pressuring in. Here, here, he pushes my foot off, he hops to the side, I, pull, I switch my feet, I sit up over the knee, and I'm closing the distance again. And again, he brings this leg up, and he's got this foot in my hip, pull the heel off, re-enter, right back into the position. So, uh, guys, this is, this is a really great example of uh, really good positional control, but just how fundamental the basics are. If you don't know how to sit up over your knee and practice that sitting up over your knee, and you don't know the technical stance to your knee or technical stance to your foot, those fundamentals, they come up all the time. The penetration step, Christian's basically transitioning from a, from a, um, from a technical stance here to his knee to almost a penetration step with this position. It's that, that wrestler's pressure and that, that penetration knee. Uh, he gives all sorts of people all sorts of problems. If they are able to stop the immediate guard pass, he's right back on the leg. So this is a very strong, like right now he's just showing you as a drill, but trust me, this is a big part of his game too. So <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a very strong and, and, uh, and, and frustrating approach. Uh, one of my favorite drills, to have our guys do is starting from this uh, seated butterfly guard position. I'm picking up my partner's legs here like so, and we're gonna be entering into the single legs from either side. So you can start off just static without your partner really moving and reacting if you need to get a feel for this, but I'm picking these feet up nice and high, and I'm putting some tension, flexing, flaring my knees out like so. I want there to be kind of a snap when I enter into this. I don't want this to be uh, real gentle and it's not moving his leg. When I straighten this leg, I want that knee to come straight to my hip here like so. So I've got good tension, I'm picking these legs up, flaring my knees, I pick my foot up, I kick straight, and I scoot down to the leg here like so. Just start off static like this. I pull this leg back, right back to the butterfly. Same thing on the other side. Pick this foot up, I straighten, snaps right to me, I enter on the other side. Knees covering my heel. I'm super deep in this position here like so. Once you're feeling good with that, now have your partner kind of move with you. I'm picking up his feet. I go to enter in. He pushes my foot down. He hops over. Boom. Both my feet are on the side. I elevate. I'm right back in this position. Entire time I'm controlling these legs. And with our first two drills, if I enter in, and let's say I let go of this and I try to attack this leg here, he pushes my heel down or he scoots away. You guys know what to do. Come right back to this combat knee, pressuring in. So once you guys can do the seated position with the butterfly guard going side to side, I want you guys to drill this standing up. Same thing, my knees are flaring out. 
I'm grabbing his heels like so, and I'm gonna enter in this position the same way. I straighten out my leg. Now when I straighten this leg out, I can't pull his heel to me, so I have to move my hips towards his heel. Kick straight, I rotate. Now when this outside leg comes over, my heel chops down on his thigh, I've gotta lift my hips up behind his knee, and now I'm gonna pinch this knee in, curling my heel, like so. This is super tight. I drop down, back to the butterfly, straighten my leg out, heel comes over, and I cover, like so. Drop down, and I'm here. And I can do this again, same as before. My partner pushes off my heel, they're defending, they're moving, back, and I enter in. Try not to skip the butterfly. That butterfly should be always your home base. That's there if you're losing space so you can transition to other things if, if my partner's just defending the single X really well. Let's do it from the side. Here, here, boom. I straighten, as I straighten, hips coming down. Heel comes over, I lift my hips up, I cover, like so. Drop, straighten, heel comes up and over. I use my heel to lift my hips. I pinch everything nice and tight. Same thing as before, this foot, it's not wrapped around this thigh. It's wrapped around that far thigh, pinching everything in tight. This is super controlling. If I move, my partner should move. If I'm turning my knees, his body's moving as well, and vice versa. So I'm here like so, I'm in this position. My partner is gonna stand up because they wanna strengthen their Achilles by hitting their foot flat on the mat. This isn't necessarily the, the best way to defend the single X, but it's really common, especially if you haven't been playing with leg positions before. So my partner will turn away, and what they have to do is get this foot underneath them. So he stands all, all the way up, here like so, and in this position as, as he's standing, I'm dropping, going right to my shallow X, like so. Boom, boom, here. If I can bring you back down, sir. If, if they're not clearing, your hooks, then we're just gonna return them to the mat. So he goes to stand up, boom, he comes up here. I'm gonna lift my hips up. I'm gonna turn my knees, just putting them on the edge of his foot, and I'm gonna block, sweeping him over like so. Partner goes to stand up, boom, they're here. They're trying to clear these feet at the same time. I shoot right to the single X. If I can catch them by surprise, I'll drop this foot down and use the bum dump to put it back. Now from here, foot comes up. I can retract this leg, go right back to my single X. Here like so. So I'm gonna give you guys another option here from when I have the, the leg on the outside. If I feel like I'm losing this position and I don't want to come straight up to the combat knee, what I can do is I can grab his heel and I can swim this leg to the inside here like so. And the benefit about this is I do the same thing as before. I do my technical stance and now I'm driving up into my ninth position here like so. Um, something really common I just want to, to point out is guys will try to go after the um, calf slicer from here easy way to deter that. If I bring this leg to the outside and they start chasing this, if you feel like it's a real fret, threat, put your foot here behind your Achilles so that you can strengthen your leg here like so. That'll give you enough time to start to rotate and start to shorten his hand. See how that starts to peel his hand down? He's here, I just start to turn like this. Now, his weak is wrist, his uh, weak is, wrist is weak. <laughs> <laughs> wrist is weak in this position. From here, if he's still insistent upon this, I'm gonna pull this leg out, and I'm gonna go right into the honey hole here like so. But let's do that from the other side too. Sure. So I'm in top, I'm in, I'm in my, my single X, and I just don't have good control, so I switch to the leg on the inside. But as I'm going, he tries to thread in this cap slicer. If it's a real issue, I'm gonna reinforce this here like so and I'm extending my legs. Very difficult for them to hold on. If they're still insisting on it or they have long arms, I'm gonna change my angle slightly and I'm gonna take this leg and I'm gonna lace it through right into my honey hole. Okay, and then show the coming up, coming up into the, the, the pass. Now, now, if they're not chasing this, they're not holding on to it, I'm gonna pull this foot back. Same thing as before, technical stance. 
and I'm going to start driving this knee across to my ninth position. <clears throat> this was something that, that Chris started uh, hitting me with when I started trying to, when I wasn't even, I was trying to do the, the, the calf slicer on him. And he started running this. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he started doing this because I was trying to calf slicer him, or if he already had and he just used it as a defense. But it's very effective. Very effective because you're already you're already knee deep in the pass, and you know we've got the other video on the ninth position, so you know how effective that ninth position is. If you don't, I'll link it in, and you can check it out. Awesome. So in the single X, good defense from here. Um, people try to roll to get out of this. So if I'm in here. He's going to try to block this foot and turn away from me and come up on all fours here like so. If I can have you turn, he comes up in this position. I can try to go for the knee bar here. Sometimes that's there, especially if the person has longer legs. But if it's not, I've got to be careful about him knee sliding out of this position. So to combat that, we're going to go into this calf ride. I drop this foot here as he's trying to pull this leg away. I'm sliding my shin down and I'm sitting up right away. If I can, I'm gonna to try to keep this foot between my body and his as well. I plant my foot back here like so, and I can sit right up, and I can go after the calf slicer. Now this is actually pretty easy to defend. The, the way to defend this, we turn this way a little bit, is for him just to sit back on this hip. He continues to rotate. Oh, rotate a little more, a little more. Yeah, exactly. Now he, he's safe at this point. So I've got this leg, he blocks this hook here like so, he turns away from me and he comes up to all fours. As he does that, this leg is sliding down, I'm chopping on his calf, I plant this foot behind me, I can try to sit up, hug the hips or hug the thigh to go for this calf ride. For him to defend this, he just has to sit to this hip. He rotates like so. Nice thing about this is if I can catch this foot, when he's planting, I kick this leg away, and I'm going to plant my heels to the mat, I pull the back of his knee, and I re-enter back into this position. This is one of my favorite drills. If we could scoot this way a little bit, sir, and now we can practice going side to side. So he, he turns away from me, and he comes up to all fours. Boom. I go for this calf right. He sits to his hip by continuing to rotate. As he does, he's pulling this leg back. I catch the Achilles, I catch the knee, I pull this to me. I turn to my side, I want my knee up. If I'm down like this, I'm trapping my own leg. I turn, I kick his foot out, and now I use my legs to scoot in nice and close. Same thing on the other leg. He turns away, I slide this down, I'm sitting up, very important to sit up. If I'm laying on my back, he's surely gonna get out. He sits to that hip, as he's kicking over, I'm catching the knee, I'm catching the Achilles, I kick away, I scoot in nice and close. Let's do it sideways too. Here, here, he goes in, he turns away, he blocks, I chop down on the back of his knee like so, he kicks this leg up and over. I'm trying to sit up. I've also got to sit up one, so he can't sprint and escape, and two, sitting up allows me to catch this leg. If I'm way back here, I'm never gonna get that leg in time by the time he gets out. So I can't be lazy in this position. I sit up, knee, Achilles, I fall to my side, I kick this leg away. Now, using my feet, I pull my hips closer to him, so again, I have him above this thigh line. And you might even find that you're actually entering in this position even deeper from them trying to escape here like so. I'm gonna go back. Boom, he turns away. I chop, I sit up. He goes to get out. Here, catching the knee, catching the Achilles. Kick out, scoot down. Super cool. Uh, Again, thank you to Coach Doug for having me here today to uh, shoot some videos for BJJ Curriculum. Uh, I'm really excited to share this approach with you guys. Um, you see it all the time when people are, are working a submission 
and it's very common in the beginning stages for somebody is they get super excited about seeing the sub. You know, they're like they're going after the arm bar and yeah. <laughs> and it's like, man, you don't have quite have the position and you gotta talk to them. So what do you tell them? You're like, position before submission. The other thing with that is when you're placing a submission on, it's your job to make sure that your partner has plenty of time to tap. And for me, if, if we're going with, uh, with white belts and blue belts, if they're not tapping, you know, rather than just being like, oh, I'm gonna teach them a lesson, I need to have options to go to other things, to transition, go to other attacks. So one, I'm still getting good training, but I'm also keeping my partner safe. It's just super huge. So you guys can take these drills, and I practice these every day. All these drills, I use them all the time. I don't go for the leg like, submissions on the, the people that don't know them. And I or can even safely. in gi, even in gi when they're not when they're not legal. And you know, Chris does these. Chris does, does these with white belts, brown belts, black belts, purple belts, everybody. And so, but but wherever whatever's legal in the context of the rolling, yeah, it, it just may, it gives you such an advantage. You know, we we've all fallen victim to it if you've been training for a while. Guy jumps on a, an ankle lock or a toe hold. They don't have the position, so they overcompensate for, for it by going even harder into it and not giving you that time. Um, it should be no different than going after any other submission. The legs are no exception. You control the position. You give your partner plenty of time to tap. And if they're not, and you're, you're in practice, don't insist on it. Go to something else. After going over these drills, you'll have plenty of options. All right, you savages, we just scratched the surface with the leg lock game and all these drills that we're giving you. Um, if you like this, uh, if you like this style, spend a little time with it, work on these drills, get a partner, drill it, and then incorporate it into your, into your uh, rolling. As you saw, there's no attacks that's going to get you disqualified. I mean, obviously, if you're reaping or something like that and you, and you aren't allowed to do that in class, whether it's gi or no gi, depending on your academy, Follow the rules of your academy, but this is going to give you a safe way to train all those positions and get reps. And you know, if you just use these positions to increase your passing game, you're going to be more effective at passing. Um, so if you like this approach after you've tried it out and you want us to show you some more drills, um, we really didn't go over anything in the honey hole. We didn't go over anything in the reaping just because uh, for time and, and we want to make sure the interest is out there. So if you're interested in it, make sure you subscribe, uh, help us get more subscriptions. If enough people are interested, maybe we'll say like, hey, when we get 10,000 subscribers, we'll do this and this and this. So comment, share, reach out to us on our Facebook. Uh, and our Instagram, you can follow us and like us on Instagram and Facebook. On the Facebook, sometimes we, we do shorter, smaller videos on stuff as well. So good to, good to be on both of, the, both of those with us. So thanks again for your time. Hope you enjoyed the, the new studio. And uh, we hope to see you again on BJJ Curriculum and also hopefully sometime on the map.